how would you handle the trade debt? We, we wouldn't worry a whole lot about it. We'd have sound money. And when you have sound money and free trade, you don't worry about trade deficits. Uh, do you know what the trade deficit is between New York and Texas? Nobody knows and nobody cares. If we don't have enough money in Texas, we have to quit buying. That's what would happen in the world if you had a sound monetary system, a gold standard where people couldn't create money out of thin air. The only time these trade deficits mean something is when you're on an inflated paper money system like we are today, and then they mean something. So if you have a gold standard, sound money, and free market, you don't even keep the records. When you, if you spend too much money and you come up short, you've got to go back to work and earn some money before you can buy uh, uh, things from Japan. It's too much welfare. We cut back on welfare. It's too much interest on the national debt. A sound currency would lower the interest payment. So we would balance the budget and media at a much lower level. I think it would be the greatest thing in the world for the economy. What should government do? Protect our freedoms. Have a strong national fence. Look and take care of our borders. Have a sound currency. So we want to have a uh, protection of the general welfare, the general environment of free markets and, uh, and, and uh, ability to uh, trade with each other and travel among the states. That was the responsibility of the federal government, not to run our lives and run everything in the uh, economy and extend you know, the Interstate Commerce Clause and the General Welfare Clause to do anything they want to do. That is what has happened. We need the government out of the way, but it should have sound money, low taxes, less regulations, and a sensible policy where we're not wasting our money overseas. What you have to do is restore sound money. You have to understand why you have a business cycle, why you have booms and busts. If you don't do that, there's no way you can solve these problems. And the booms and busts comes from a failed monetary system. The, the interest rates that are way lower than, than they should be encourages malinvestment and debt. And to get out of that, all this other tinkering, you cannot do that unless you liquidate debt. You don't bail out the people that are bankrupt and dump the debt on the people. The president's not supposed to manage and run the economy. The people are supposed to do this. The, the government is supposed to give them sound money, uh, low taxes, less regulations. The people are supposed to run it. But here we're assuming that the president is supposed to run the economy. They don't have a right to a house or a right to a job or a right to medical care. And besides, once government government decides those are rights, you end up with much less. Once the government gets involved in, in uh, planning, central planning, whether it's education or medicine or housing, look at what they did when they decided everybody should have a house. We had a housing bubble. Now we have a housing bubble that's collapsing. People are losing their homes. So this whole motivation, the purpose of government is to protect liberty and understand how the marketplace works. So a truly compassionate person would argue the case for tr truly free markets and sound money that's what we need, then you would help people. I do think that we pushed some of these programs with Community Reinvestment Acts and, and Easy Credit. There were a lot of things that encouraged this where I am, I'm, I'm convinced that we're, if we had a little sounder monetary system and we didn't have this so easy credit, people wouldn't be making right. so many mistakes. Say, you have to respond to History that. is on the side of hard money. If you look at stable prices, you have to look to the only historic sound money that's lasted more than a few years. Fiat money always in. The way we get into this trouble is, is due to accepting some notions about money that are false. We have believed since 1971 that there should be no linkage of our money to anything sound as the Constitution mandates. There should be no linkage of the dollar to gold or silver, which then gives the Congress the leeway of spending endlessly. Deficits don't matter. We can tax and we can borrow, but if we still don't have enough money, we can depend on the Federal Reserve just to print the money. Next book came out this week, and the Fed, and we're having a lot of excitement surrounding this. And I've had a lot of uh, interviews on this. Today, somebody asked me, what should I do uh, in, in this country to improve our economy? My answer was very simple, and the Fed. The Fed is the culprit, and I talk about that in the, this book and explain why the Fed not only creates our problems, they perpetuate the problems, and the sooner we come around to understanding that, and uh, at first, of course, get the audit of the Fed, but eventually, we have to end the Fed if we care about sound money, personal liberties, limited government. This is the book that you have to read. So we need to get busy and really have change because we need to immediately balance the budget, pay down some of the debt, let people go back to work, bring our troops home, have sound money. That's a revolution. If you want change, 
What you need is somebody that's going to make sure you're never going to have a draft and that we're going to bring our troops on, we're going to balance the budget, we're going to have sound money. He never talks about any of that. The role for the government ought to be giving us a sound currency, not a bunch or a few people in secret rooms that have monopoly control over the money supply and the interest rates. That's not in the Constitution. People who like individual liberties and free markets and sound money? My proposal is to legalize competition with the Fed, and that is for you to have the constitutional right to use sound money, gold and silver currency. If you do that today, you'll be arrested even though you would be on the, you'd be, be correct constitutionally, uh, they will uh, put you in jail uh, for that. So uh, my idea is to legalize that, get rid of the legal tender laws, and people who like the Fed like paper money, fine. If others like uh, to deal in silver corn currency or gold currency, uh, they should be allowed to do it. You also don't uh, believe that medical care is a right. Now, as a, as a gynecologist, you're a doctor. How do, you, how do you justify that sort of feeling like not every American deserves the right to good medical well, care? You don't have a right to things and services. You have a right to your life. You have a right to your liberty. Yeah. And uh, if you want good medical care or if you want a healthy economy, you have to have a free market economy with sound money and uh, good contract laws, and then there'll be great prosperity. But we have a system of corporatism now where business and governments are partners, and they rip us off. I think it's much better to bite the bullet and say we've lived beyond our means, we ought to live within our means, we ought to have a sound currency and balanced budget. We need to have a system where we invite capital back into this country. We, we destroy the incentive to bring capital here. I mean, if you have a company, you have a lot of money overseas, you get taxed to bring it back. You know, the biggest thing, though, long term, that we could do for Haiti would be to introduce them to sound economic policies so that they wouldn't suffer. I mean, their buildings were built poorly and the people were so poor. And just handing out money is not going to solve that problem. They need to be introduced to the philosophy of free markets and sound money so they can be more prosperous, build better houses. Who would have ever dreamed a few years ago that uh, our monetary system would get the attention? I consider that very, very important. But now the young people on the campuses are studying Austrian economics and sound money, and they know about how silly paper money is and why that gives us booms and busts yeah. and unemployment. So I think that's exciting. You know, it's really scary to see what can happen in a society when the overspending uh, comes home to roost. You know, when, when, when you see the consequences of years and years of overspending. Obviously, people here are very worried about our debt and our deficit. Congressman Paul, could, could this kind of thing happen here? Could what we're seeing in Greece and California oh, yeah. happen on a nationwide Absolutely. basis here? Absolutely, and there's going to be anger and there's going to be riots in the streets as well. But this is all a consequence of the fact that why and how do governments spend like this? It's because they don't have sound money. When we run up deficits, we tax, but never enough. We can't tax, it would ruin the economy. Then we borrow and we get away with that for a long time. But we rely on the printing presses from the Federal Reserve to create the money. And that's where the problem is. Size up the Republican race for me a little bit. What do you think of Sarah Palin? No, I'm not much into, into sizing up anybody. <laughs> well, I can, I can size them up as a group. I think, uh, I think so far, most of them represent uh, the status quo, you know, and not any... I think they're shifting a little bit because of the political pressure. But who, who's saying bring all the troops home? Who's saying that we need sound money and we ought to believe in the Constitution? Who wants to get rid of the Patriot Act? Who believes in property rights? You know, uh, they're, they're going to modify their position, but they represent the status quo. And this is what excites so many people now. They're sick of the status quo. Will there be a, a deal to raise the debt ceiling this month? Well, I don't think anybody has an absolute answer to that, but I have my suspicions, and I would bet on that there will be. And uh, much to your unhappiness. Sure. I mean, I came into the Congress a good many years ago, and uh, my goal was to shrink the size of government and balance our budget, pay the bills, have sound money, and live within our means and mind our own business. And I haven't done a very good job. <laughs> it seems like we're going in the wrong direction. Currency is sound only when it is recognized and accepted as such by individuals through the actions of the market without coercion. Throughout history, gold and silver have been the two commodities that have most fully satisfied the requirements of sound money. You are a disciple of what's called the Austrian School of Economics. What is that, briefly? Uh, and, and what would economists like Ludwig von Mises and Friedrich Hayek, who were two of the leaders, 
of the Austrian School right. of Economics. What would they say is the right way to deal uh, with boosting the economy now and with dealing with our national debt? Well, they asked Mises that one time. They were having runaway inflation in Austria. It's Austrian economics because the main leaders of the school came. They escaped. They were mostly Jewish, and they came over here to escape uh, Nazism. And they asked him once at the height of a crisis like this, and there was a, a bit more inflation, and they said to uh, Mises, uh, what would you do? And he said, I'd resign. In other words, Take your hands off of it. Let the people take care of it. Let the people who have lived beyond their means, let them go bankrupt. Let the liquidation occur. Get rid of the malinvestment like we did in 1921. We recovered, it's not even in, hardly in our textbook, about the depression of 1921, which was a natural consequence of the inflation for World War I. So we want our hands off. The depression lasted 17 years because we wouldn't do that. Japan has had hands-on. They've been in the doldrums for 20 years. So, and we're now into this one. It's a lot more than five years. We're basically been in over 10 years that our economy has been slipping. So they would say, hands off, give us a sound currency, free up the markets, property rights, enforce contracts, make sure people go bankrupt when they're bankrupt, and don't bail out their buddies. Don't let the Federal Reserve create money out of thin air. The philosophy of this country is shifting. It's a shifting in the direction of the Constitution, limited government, a foreign policy that is different, uh, balancing our budget, having sound money. So I would say it's coming together. The philosophy is coming together with a political change. And we've talked about this uh, even four years ago. It was coined as a revolution.